can start streaming here. Cool. And away we go. Go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a live recording of Guide to the Unknown with me, Will. And me, his big sister, Kristen. Oh, my God. We're not going to waste here any time. Here we are. I think we're going to get yeah. right into recording the show itself. Thanks for sticking with us, everybody. Yeah. So, Chrissy, in your own good time, kick it off. Okay. Hello. Welcome to Guide to the Unknown. I'm Kristen, and I hated this movie. And I'm her little brother, William. And I think you're all going to be very upset with me this week. <laughs> Why? I, uh... <laughs> So this is our second week of Cagetober, where we are yes. exclusively talking about Nicolas Cage movies. Last week, we covered The Wicker Man, and this week, we are covering the first horror movie Nicolas Cage ever made, a movie known as Vampire's Kiss. Right. And it is, uh, I think, from my vantage point, uh, probably up there with the movie The Room yeah, as I, yeah. a, a sort of titan of the like WTF so bad it's good genre of film. Um, I didn't even feel it was so bad it's good. I really, really, really <laughs> hated my experience of watching this. Uh, I really hated it. <laughs> I had such a bad time. I was sick, yeah. first of all. Mm -hmm. I had a stomach bug. And I, the stunk bug had been brewing like the day before. I just wasn't feeling that great. I didn't think I was going to get full on sick, but I wasn't feeling that well. And I had planned on that night watching Vampire's Kiss. And I just had this sense that it was going to be a somewhat sickening movie. And I was like, I already feel a little bit not good. I'll watch it tomorrow because I'll probably wake up feeling fresh as a daisy and I'll go in then. I got even sicker, but I had to watch it for the show. Right. So that was going on. It, it felt three hours long oh yeah i genuinely enjoyed house of a thousand corpses more than i enjoyed vampire's kiss you're saying you j okay i i i i i for a second i thought you were going to say i genuinely enjoyed house of a thousand corpses but i didn't like this no you're saying I, no. to compare the two yes uh house of a thousand corpses is not as bad as vampire's kiss right I really don't think it is like there were at least some interesting things for me to look at glom onto. Like I was able to, in the course of you forcing me to answer certain questions for the house of a thousand corpses episode, you made me say what my favorite part was yeah. and like say positive things. I could at least conjure up something that I was like, theoretically, this is cool. I didn't like a thing about this movie i hated it i think i think you saying that at all means that i'm gonna have to ask you to come up with what, what your favorite moment of this movie was william the ending oh boy the credits it's, the credits the credits were pretty long so i guess i'll say the credits it seems to count did you watch all the credits in the beginning, the Are credits waiting were waiting for an, like, uh, an end credit scene? <laughs> yeah. I was Googling, is there end credits vampire's kiss? I, now, I, in the beginning, like how <laughs> credits used to be kind of longer, I feel like, yeah. in the beginning of movies, it's that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I will say, so I did some, I did some research about this movie, and I found yeah. bits and pieces of the commentary track. I tried mm -hmm. to find a DVD so I could listen to the full commentary track. Unavailable. I could not find this thing anywhere. Whoa, 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 whoa. Were you going to buy the DVD to listen to the commentary track? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Oh, my God, William. I mean, I would have. You have too much money. Send it uh, on over to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, money is <laughs> no, I know, <laughs> abundance. I know. But, uh, no, I was going I was going to say we could probably give it away afterward. Ugh. I bet people that would be a funny thing to do. But so I wanted to no, hear the commentary know. track because I saw that there's a Nicolas Cage commentary. Anyway, the reason why I'm saying this is he says he feels as if. Nick, uh, uh, Jack Nicholson um, took some of this performance to make that movie Wolf. Give me a break. No, he did not. Now, not even having seen Wolf. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. Um, he did not. I know he did. But I that's can feel a, it in my bones. Ta forget Universal's, you know, dark universe. There's cinematic universe of monsters. I want the Jack Nicholson, Nicolas Cage. I want Vampire's oh. Kiss v. Wolf. That's what I'm dying for. <laughs> I would watch that only for the wolf because I really hated watching Nicolas Cage be this vampire thing. Also, I don't understand. 
I don't get this movie. Is this supposed to be some sort of metaphor for something that's over my right. head? Uh, eh, no. I, I think it's uh, no. I, I can't imagine. All right, let me let me set the table a, a little bit. I did a little something different uh, this week from last week. So just briefly, for people who have no idea what this movie is, go watch the trailer, and you still mm -hmm. won't get a great idea of what's happening. But the nuts and bolts of it are this: it's a movie from 1988, and here's the tagline on the poster: after an encounter with a neck biter. A publishing executive thinks that he's turning into a vampire. Now, I think that that's a pretty good tagline because they specifically say he thinks he's turning yes. into a vampire. Uh, he's not, right, in this movie. He's not turning into a vampire, I think, definitively. And I feel it's not completely clear, unless you've read that tagline, that he is not. Like, something strange is going on with this guy. Yes. Um, so it seems not out. And you watch him get bitten by a vampire repeatedly. Right. So it doesn't seem outside of the realm of possibility that he has been turned into a vampire. Except for everything that he does and says and experiences, which have nothing to do with, you know. Being a vampire. Being a vampire, yeah. I don't know. And that I mean, most of this movie like, takes place during the day. <laughs> yeah, well, he's wearing, like, humongous, like, cataract sunglasses. That's what I wrote, too. I was like, when he starts wearing sunglasses, he's walking around his office wearing sunglasses and smoking. And somebody yeah. goes, he's so eccentric. And that would lead you to think he's being, like, a badass rebel, but he looks like an old man who's had his eyes dilated, you know, yes. at the lens crafters in the mall and yes. has to wear huge sunglasses for the rest no, of the day. No, because it's his, his warped version of, like, a vampire being afraid of the sun. Right. So he's guarding his eyes. I don't know. I seriously... I, <laughs> It wasn't clear. No. I mean, I knew that he wasn't from the tagline, but yes. just like, so what's going on then? Well, what's so actually, I, I just realized I misspoke. That wasn't the tagline. That was the well, synopsis. Here's yes. the actual tagline. Mm -hmm. Seduction, romance, murder. The things one does for love. Is it for love? No. He's not doing those things for love. No, he's just doing those things seemingly at random. This is a, yes. this is a bug nuts movie. This is almost a... Um, this is almost like an art house attempt. Um, it totally is. It's Kafka esque. Yes. So Nicolas Cage, very much like, you know, he thinks he's turning into a vampire. He believes that, first of all, a bat flies through his window while he is um, in flagrante delicto. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> your, your wish has been granted. Yes. And uh, he, he gets more turned on by the bat than the mm -hmm. lady. He does this look over his shoulder and sweep of his hair. This yeah. like big gargantuan soap opera move as if he's like suddenly grooming himself because of this bat he's seeing. Um, and then the following night, he believes he has an encounter with a woman who bites him on the neck. And bit right. by bit, he starts to have symptoms, he thinks, of vampirism. Um, mm -hmm. going from uh, being unable to be out in the sunlight to thinking that he can't be killed. Somebody tries to shoot him with a gun and it's full of blanks. And then he shoots right. himself with the gun too and it's, and it's not killing him. So he's like, I knew it. I'm a vampire. He thinks he can't see his own reflection in a mirror, even though we can. We mm -hmm. see, like there are three mirrors in the scene and he's in each of them. And yeah. yet he's saying, it happened. Where am I? Where am I? He thinks he can't be seen. So it's almost like it's Just some power of the mind stuff a little bit. It's it's a mental illness movie. Oh, yeah, totally. But like played as I don't know. It's like a gonzo sort of movie. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, darkly comic. And ugh, this gross. is this is not a funny movie. This is a no, movie. It's not. No, this is a movie that is known primarily for Nicolas Cage's performance. Yes, like if you look at the trailer, you'll recognize his outfit from memes yeah. that go all over the place. This is a super duper memeable movie because he's acting insanely huge. Like Will mentioned last week on the show that he has said that he's very inspired by German expressionism, which um, is a style of acting that rejects realism, which is exactly what it sounds like, is acting realistic. Right. He's very interested in this big way of acting that's kind of inspired by silent films and bringing that into non-silent films. And it's like a weird, like, social experiment or something. It is. Or artistic experiment. It's... 
Oh, it almost, it almost, it almost like de- definitively on the nose is exactly that. It's an experiment. Uh, so yeah. in some of his um, commentary track, he talks about exactly that. He's like, I wanted to see, could I take elements of silent film acting, which was like silent film, you know, the beginning of film is, is really people taking stage work and, yeah. and recording it. And so people are acting, uh, very broadly and very big and playing to the back of the room because that's a lot of what stage acting tends or tended to be. And mm-hmm. so to do that in a movie usually looks insane because with a film yeah. camera, you can, you know, pull in on a tight close up and get really minute, uh, right. subtle uh, adjustments of a face can teeny, convey a lot. Teeny nuances, right? But he still goes huge here. So there's, there's literally a moment uh, in the movie. Where and I, I, I so again I think the shockeru for me is that I think this is probably the second or third time I've seen this movie. And really? I fe- oh yeah. Oh my god. And I think I understood it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Tell. I I, I, this upon I, me. I think I saw the Matrix. I think I, I, I think I can see <laughs> the construction of this, and I think I, I think I'm red pilled on Vampire's yeah. Kiss. I um I can't pretend I like it. Uh Um, but I, I said to you, you know, uh, a week ago or more as we've been talking about cage Tober, like, Oh my God, we're going to have to do vampires kiss. Aren't we? Yeah. Actually I suggested it and you were like, Oh God. And I was like, well, we don't have to. And you were like, no, we kind of have to. I I straight up counted this as along with house of a thousand corpses, which I, I, listen, I haven't seen that movie in years now. Yeah. Maybe maybe I'll have to be forced to watch it. Because I still, in my head, it is so much worse than this movie. So much worse. This I movie is not trying. Again... Is, this <laughs> movie is not trying to be cool, right? Like, House of a Thousand Corpses <laughs> wants you to go, hell yeah. Yeah, not in that way. I think it wants to be cool. No, I think this movie wants to be cool in a way. It's like cerebral cool or something. I think this movie wants to be. I think this movie is a little pretentious. I think it wants to be lofty yeah. and have something true to say which is not true of house of a thousand corpses he's not trying to say anything he's just trying to be like this is a badass i kind of prefer that at least in this instance i really don't mind you know fun or cool just for the sake of fun or cool yeah there are times when people are saying something and i'm into what they're saying i don't reject that outright but in this instance I don't know. I, I know that I was bringing my own physical illness to this, but this movie right. sickened me. Yeah, I love that you had to watch this while you were feeling sick. <laughs> I uh, I remember, uh, I think I've said this before, but I, I had like this in- insane, this is probably like eight or nine years ago. I, I had this insane cold or something that lasted for like two weeks. Mm. And um, I was just like, I could barely get out of bed. And then I think Allie, or maybe it wasn't Allie, somebody convinced me, like, you you haven't been sleeping. You should take NyQuil. Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't like taking things that affect my perception. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've always been afraid of NyQuil. But I took mm-hmm. NyQuil, and I I was I was binging Buffy, the vampire slayer, <laughs> and bouncing back and forth between it and Angel, because those shows used to air back-to-back. Yeah. Back. So I was like, I'll watch them at, in release order and see if I get the full story almost. Right. And it's like it's like I kept hitting, you know, next episode, next episode, next episode, um, while my mind was going like, what's happening? What am I want? I don't feel good. And so to this day, to this day, I have like a physiological reaction when I think about Buffy or Angel. I like feel I feel unwell. I feel insane. I can understand it. So did you you stayed up through the NyQuil? Basically? I think so. Yeah, I, 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 I well, I don't go to sleep well anyway. Mm-hmm. I, I do think I fought the NyQuil, but I also think I was like falling asleep and waking up and not sure where I left off or what was happening. I think oh. it was seeping into my dreams. Like I, I think I had a really like a, a lame, like a very vanilla guy's trip yeah. uh, on well, NyQuil, you know? That's, I mean, that's a thing. Like people taking Ambien and like forcibly staying awake through it. Famously, Tiger Woods uh, did that a lot when he was having all those affairs. Oh, is that right? Multiple of the women reported back, like they could kind of corroborate that he was very into doing it on Ambien. Oh, yeah, oh, that's. Weird. I, I don't know why I haven't done that before, but um, whatever. It's a thing. Obviously, some sort of effect takes place when you stay up through, you know, nighttime medicine. I guess is is there a reverse thing like that? Is there like you know I drink coffee and then take a nap? Is that a thing at all? 
Actually, it it yeah, it is actually. There's um, but but totally fine and you know like healthy. doing like not, opposites, uh, you know. No, it's it's um, it's a tactic. Like because caffeine takes like twenty to thirty minutes to take effect. Yeah. So there is this idea of drinking coffee, trying to take a nap right away in that pocket before the caffeine takes effect. And then when you wake up, you're refreshed from your nap, and the caffeine is doing its thing. Now. Oh, so, so like you must get a good. boost. Right. Like in Mario that, Kart, when you when you it. hit the button just right at the start of the race. I can never do that anymore, but yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So so back to to Vampire's Kiss. I I feel mm-hmm. like to some degree I understood it. So there's this scene where Nicolas Cage is uh, talking to his secretary. A, a significant chunk of this movie is Nicolas Cage abusing his secretary. I know. I hated that. I hated it. Um, and uh, in this one scene, he's asking her to find a file mm-hmm. that has been misplaced. And uh, at a certain point, he uh, she goes like, well, maybe if you just could like hire someone else or give somebody else this task or let somebody help me try to find it because there's just so much stuff to go through. I can't find it. He goes, oh, Alva, I couldn't give this job to anybody else. You're the lowest on the totem pole. Do you understand that? You are the lowest person in this office. You, everybody else has been here longer than you. There is no one around who I would give such an awful, horrible job to. And as he's saying this like monologue about how yeah. he just wants her to do it, he's leaning in and his eyes are getting wider and wider. And this is where a big meme face comes from. This is like, yes. this is a scene that people have clipped and like shared the meme of a million different ways. I'll put it on the cover art for this episode. I'm sure because sure. it's you, it's you the face not. of the movie. But in yeah. the commentary, he's like, he goes, yeah, yeah. What I was doing here, I wanted to see if I could get my eyes as big as possible. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's his whole game in that scene. He wanted to make yeah. his eyes as big as possible. He wanted to freak out that performer he was yeah. talking to. But what happens right after? He goes like. Do you understand? And he sits back and his eyes go back to normal. And I actually think, I think it's very effective. I think it's crazy, <laughs> but I think it works. It is crazy. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. And in a, for me, this time, it was very entertaining. Huh. Okay. Well, good. I, That's awesome. You know, I got faked out by IMDb a little bit as far as the plot of this movie goes, just from something that I assumed. Yeah. So I went to the IMDb because I wanted to know the name of the actor who played Alpha, his uh, like secretary or whatever. Yeah. Her name was Maria Conchita Alonso, if I remember correctly. And her um, little mini icon on IMDb was her kind of like very dressed up, but almost in like a goddess situation. Like it's not oh. like she was at a movie premiere. It's like something crazy. So I was like, oh, I wonder if she's in cahoots with jessica beale i mean jessica beale what the hell's her name jennifer beale jennifer is the, um, yeah she's the vampire. the vampire yeah and um like she's actually this like vampire goddess and they're gonna like fell this dude at some point so i was kind of waiting for like alva's revenge and it never came unfortunately no no i to, to honestly to that point now again i think i think i had a little more freedom this mm-hmm. being a, a not the first time that I was watching this movie. I knew what I was getting into and I was not looking forward to it. So also maybe the bar was so low for me mentally that mm-hmm. there was nowhere to go, but up for this movie. Um, it couldn't have been lower for me. The bar though. I knew this was going to suck. Uh, yeah, but, but I've actually I I seen the lived, this. The lived experience. Uh, there really is no, there's no adequate way that unless you've seen this movie that we can describe how miserable mm-hmm. so much of it is and how, how insane Nicolas Cage's performances. It's just yeah. impossible. He goes, this is probably this is probably the worst acting and the craziest performance in a in a film mm-hmm. I have ever seen. Ever. Yeah. Of all time. And that's you saying that? Oh yeah. So he he loves this movie and yeah. this performance. I was surprised to see that he because it seemed like a kind of thing when I was looking into it that like maybe he'll be like dismissive of it a little bit be like oh vampire's kiss i know that's so crazy it's so memes he loves it he said he said this is his favorite movie and his favorite performance yeah he said that he puts it up there with uh face off 
Uh-huh. These oh. are these are the two performances. High praise. Yeah. God, I love Face Off. He is such <sighs> a compelling actor. Well, yeah, nobody goes as far as he does for better or for worse, right? Like No. To he's that just, end, he's so interesting to watch but yeah. it wasn't enough to save it he no. was he was too nauseating well are, you almost okay. say it like he's a good part of the movie no that's not what i mean I, i'm talking about him in a broader sense in general right yeah 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 he's just a super compelling actor right. like this movie honestly, I'll, I'll give a glance to pretty much any nicholas cage movie i'll give it a look it's, okay. it's gonna be something he's he's got charisma sometimes he's really great and in a genuine way and even when he's bad it's usually like a real swing through the fences fun thing to watch right um but this was neither like it was no. swinging for the fences but it was just like what world is this yeah in? it's this yeah, is this is a hard too. i found it very annoying yeah well the other thing is for some reason he's doing this unplaceable accent Oh, I know. I read something that he said that this guy, because he's kind of like a, um, so he's a, a literary agent, I think. Yeah. And he's like a rich guy that he thought that he would have some sort of like vaguely British European transatlantic thing going. Right. But even for that idea, it's a terrible accent. It's horrible. It's, 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 it really, this really it's like is. a joke accent. Yes. He go, at one point he's talking to Alba in a car and I think they're talking about work. Um, and he goes, it doesn't go away, Alva. Nothing yeah. goes away. He says it like Go. that. Goes. No, no place has that accent. No, it's almost like SoCal. It's almost yes, yes. Bill and Ted. Yes. Um, but it's bigger than that, and it's insane. Mm-hmm. I read somewhere, and then I couldn't find it again. I did so much reading about this movie. Um, that it was it was meant to also perhaps be... The, uh, sort of like neo Transylvanian accent, oh. but I, I couldn't find that again, and mm-hmm. I, maybe I maybe I maybe I had a nightmare. I I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's true, but uh, I I who knows what this accent is. Also, it's evidently in part based on his father, yes, who was right. a professor and yep. maybe spoke with this. Now, this what's also weird is like I've never really understood what it is that Fraser talks like, right? Like. The character Frasier has this, I like, know. well, come now, Niles. It's posh. Like, yeah, it's posh. It's upper class. It's mm. upper class, you know, continental. From, like, the 40s or something. It's so many upper class people don't talk like that now. But it's affected, right? Yes. Nobody, nobody, that's not their real voice, right? No. Like, if you, if you, if you punched Frasier in the face, he'd right. be like, oh, god damn it. He wouldn't go, oh, god damn it. Or is it so ingrained he would go, oh, God damn it. I don't know. It's just so know. it's just so crazy. But yeah, it's definitely cultivated. And a- another thing online is they say that he adopts the accent more with people that he thinks he needs to impress. Mm-hmm. But I don't find that to be the case. Again, he says to Alva, who he does, does not care about and doesn't want to impress, it never goes away. Right. So he's affecting the accent. Maybe nice. it just comes and goes. Maybe it just Maybe it does go away throughout the course of the movie. Maybe um, it's just Maybe a slippery like accent. Yeah, completely. Um, um so you, <laughs> <laughs> what was it that you were saying was going to like piss people off or whatever at the beginning that you don't think it's that you got it. I think I understood it now. Okay. And I didn't, I didn't really hate it. I, I didn't like it, mm-hmm. but I was watching it and I was a little more fascinated and disturbed the way the movie wants me to be disturbed. I think. I think okay. I participated in this movie more than just watching it and being like, oh my God, yeah. which is usually what I do. I remember watching this movie and thinking that it felt eternal oh, in Oh God, yeah. It was an hour and 43 minutes long yeah. and it felt like double the time. I kept pausing it just to see where I was and I was like, oh God, it's not over. Well, I never, you know, I never watched this show, show this movie for a show. I never watched mm-hmm. it to be somewhat analytical or to have something to say about it. So I watched it really closely this time. And more often than not, even if I wasn't enjoying what I was seeing, I was kind of like, oh, oh, okay. This is clicking for me. And there are actually a few things that I do like in it. Well, do tell. So uh, there is this very odd thing happening in the movie. I mean, it's the entire concept of the movie, right? So he thinks that he got bitten by a vampire 
Right. And there are just like little things that happen that don't make sense that it it almost takes you out of the film because you're like, well, he knows he's faking this, doesn't he? But mm-hmm. it, it, it almost becomes like, no, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not aware that he's faking this, but little things will break the reality of, of his own, uh, of his own hallucination. So he thinks that he got bitten on the neck by a vampire. The next morning he's shaving and he nicks his neck with the razor. So he starts wearing a bandaid on his neck to cover where he nicked himself. Later that's shown to be a vampire bite. Well, it looks like he didn't have a bite. It looks like he imagined that cut himself. He knows he cut himself, but he also believes that that's the vampire bite. He believes it's both. Mm -hmm. Um, And then also later in the movie, when he finally goes like, I'm a vampire, I'm a vampire. He's running around screaming, I'm a vampire. He he realizes that he doesn't have fangs. He doesn't have vampire fangs. Yeah, so he, I know. This was weird to me. I, I, yeah. I, oh, it's all ahead. weird. <laughs> well, I know, but I couldn't really wrap my head around like... Now, this struck me as odd in Vampire's <laughs> Kiss. I don't know if people notice this. There's a, there are a right. few oddities in Vampire's <laughs> Kiss. I just don't get where he's coming from in some ways. I, I think it's I think it's genuinely a mental illness movie. I think this is a movie about well, yes. schizophrenia. I guess I'm not... I don't even think it's a metaphor. I, I think that this is a movie about about horrible horrible deteriorating and you watch every painful development mental illness it's horrible it's presented in a way i've never seen before yeah and you'll never see again because it's it's yeah. uh, it's a terrible movie yeah right <laughs> yeah i guess that's i guess i'm not saying i don't know what's going on with him i don't get what's going on with the movie like yeah just but i guess you're right i guess it's that it's an unflinching look yeah at mental illness and it is unflinching it is what i was gonna say is that you know if there's supposed to be any sort of ambiguity in any way about whether he's a vampire or not the whole scene with him going to buy the teeth or whether he thinks he's a vampire or not i guess yeah yeah yeah. um when he goes to buy the teeth is is a little confusing because doing that acknowledges that he's obviously not really a vampire i don't have fangs so i have to buy fake fangs he wants to buy these you know uh ceramic or whatever Mm -hmm fancy fangs that he can wear in his mouth but he can't afford them so he has to buy cheap halloween costume little right. kid fangs that are like plastic and have that hinge so you have mm-hmm. tops and bottoms and he pops them in his mouth and he's clacking them around and he can't even speak well anymore because he's got these stupid plastic teeth in his mouth he probably loved this oh so. yeah i think he had a blast i feel this this in particular was great i'll i'll, I'll go a step further for him I'm oh saying. oh for nicholas cage the actor yeah. I think this movie would be a lot of fun to do because I think that he was almost a big fish in a small pond and was given free reign to literally do whatever he wanted. And it's insane. Weirdly, because he actually wasn't a big star yet when this happened. Like, he wasn't a huge get. I think that he was filming Moonstruck, like, right before he filmed this, if I remember correctly. That's correct. They were going back and forth with the contracts on the set of Moonstruck. And that's really when he was like, big deal, like this guy's a real actor, actor sort of thing. So it's surprising that he was given such free reign. I get, yeah. it's honestly just a perfect storm. And I, oh, it's perfect. Producer, perfect. Producers and directors who trusted his vision and decided to let him go for it. And with, I, I with also. being an unproven entity. Well, sort of. I also read well, that they, they did specifically want him and his agent was like, uh 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 no 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 with moonstruck coming out you're not gonna do some junky mm-hmm. vampire movie so he signed on then he quit they yeah. wanted to get dennis quaid he wouldn't Different commit movie and nicholas cage came back and did it but also plainly if you listen to the commentary track um the the director of the movie mr beardy or something yeah i know name? jb uh oh, robert Jim. robert bierman Ah, Jim Robert Bierman. So he, um, in the commentary, at one point in the movie, Nicolas Cage is running after Alva. He's chasing her down the hallway. He pops out of his office, walks down toward her desk, and jumps like five feet in the air. He just jumps from the floor to on top of a desk. And he goes, there you are. And that kicks off the chase scene. That was not Nicolas Cage's idea. That was the director's idea. Yeah, it seemed from what I read that the the director also had some cuckoo ideas. So, so it, it was collectively 
Right. You know, it wasn't so much just, you know, Nick Cage shows up and does whatever he wants. I think there was a lot of that. Yeah. But also the director seemed to also buy into the vision or or help cultivate it. I also And the writer. Uh was like a character. Yes. The the writer well, it's funny, on Wikipedia uh they say that this was um written quote as a darkly comic written as darkly comic and deft as its bizarre premise. Joseph Minion, the writer, wrote the film as he grappled with depression. In an interview with Zach Schoenfeld of The Ringer, Minion said that while on vacation in Barbados with his then-girlfriend, he wrote the screenplay as a response to his toxic relationship with her, dealing with themes of isolation, loneliness, and domination. Zitwer, his girlfriend, who would come on as a producer for the film, found the final product to be, quote, horrifying. Yes. So this guy and his girlfriend, who were in a toxic relationship that inspired the screenplay, worked on this movie as well. Mm-hmm. What is this? Right? I like, don't know. this does not resemble. I don't know whose who's relationship. Every relationship in the movie is toxic. So I yeah. can't tell. Why is this a reaction to a toxic relationship? Is it Nicolas Cage? Is the metaphor I... the vampire on Nicolas Cage turning yes. him into something he's not? Yes, because I read that article in The Ringer where that's from, and Barbara Zitmer, I think her name is, was saying that she, you know, wasn't thrilled that she was being compared to a vampire in this. Oh. So I guess in this, that minion is Nicolas Cage, and Zitmer is Jennifer Beals, like feeding on him. But it also doesn't totally make sense because. There isn't actually somebody feeding on him. Yeah, that's not happening. So I don't know. But right? at least the theme of that. You know? Well, but the movie almost definitively shows to us that, you know, we meet in, in, a, in a scene at, the, at a club at the end of the movie. He sees Jennifer Beals mm-hmm. and he's like, you, I know you. She's a vampire. And right. she's like, I'm sorry, who are you? Like, she doesn't know him. Yeah. And now she could be putting that on, I guess, theoretically. That's a counter argument to say that, well, she's pretending not to know him right but I, I read it very literally that this has all been in his head yeah and uh there was never a bite he saw right. a bat um and uh this was probably like the nascent beginning the emergence of his mental illness him he seeing a bat, the bat got a bat bone yeah and things progressed from there exactly that's 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 how i read it to be sure yeah. um mm-hmm. but so back to some of the stuff that i like so the morning after he thinks that he's bitten by a vampire, he's like talking. He's like getting ready for his day and chatting as if she's still in the apartment, like in the mm-hmm. morning having breakfast with him. And he makes a cup of coffee or tea or something. And he goes and sits in on the bed and extends it out to the empty side of the bed where there's no one there. Right. And freezes. He, he just sits there with his arm extended, holding this cup out to no one. And there's no one to take it. And it's almost as if his brain goes like, well, this is about as far as we can go with this hallucination. Because nobody's mm-hmm. going to take this cup out of your hand. Yeah. So his body just stops. And then his mm-hmm. arm starts shaking. Almost yeah. as, as if he's also battling with himself to be like, there's nobody there, there's nobody there, there's nobody there, there's nobody there. But his mind won't really let him acknowledge it. And mm-hmm. I found that to be... Uh, honestly, watching it this time, I found this movie to be sad, mm-hmm. sad and scary. It made me feel less, um, less uh, impatient and annoyed, and more like pit of my stomach, uh, empathizing with his character, which I know is crazy to say because mm-hmm. it's it's one of the most insane performances I've, I've ever seen. Yes, very much is. But, you know, I mean, repeat watching. You got the shock of the performance out of your system. Yeah, I knew what I was getting. Yeah, you can just kind of see what's going on and, I guess, feel it in a different way. Yeah, I guess so. I I, I, I don't know. but um, Because you describing that to me just now, like, sounds interesting. And I won't say cool, but sounds interesting. And that's not the way I felt watching it. I was just like, okay, this is happening. Yeah, well, that's how the movie – the movie definitely feels like a string of just, like – all right, on to the next thing now. He's going to do something. He's in, I mean, every scene of this movie is just him, basically. Yeah. There are a few scenes of Alva, his secretary at home, right. struggling with what's going on. But, like, by and large, this is just Nicolas Cage, Nicolas Caging around. And it's mm-hmm. relentlessly uh, stupid. 
I don't really understand the Alva story. Like, what is the what is the purpose of this? Because really, the only like plot of it is just him being horrible to her. Yes, you know, right? I I, I agree. So I've I've got a couple thoughts on that as well. So the Alva plot line is 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 sort of fascinating uh, to me now. So I um. I, I thought I was clever for this, and it turns out I'm approximately the one millionth person to make this connection. This movie is the same as um, American Psycho. Mm-hmm. I heard um, you saying that before we even watched it, yeah. Yeah, so I watched both movies back-to-back um, before doing this show. Um, because I really, and I hate American Psycho. I absolutely yeah. hate it. It's ri- written by, you know, Brett Easton, Brett Easton Ellis, Ellis or David Robert Mitchum or someone. It's Brett Easton Ellis, <laughs> David Robert Mitchum. Um, but so I, you know, it, it's just a, it's just one of those movies that like, it just makes me it, it makes me again it's another movie that makes me feel like garbage, and mm-hmm. but it's another movie where like these two films are about you know um, yuppie eighties rich lazy people. Um, who are so uh, like they're they're just like listen, they're 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 affluent white men who do what they want all the time, mm-hmm. and all they do is hate their lives right. for for everything that they have, um, and they're able to get away with everything. In this movie, people constantly look at Nicolas Cage and go. He's so eccentric. Or I'm sure he's not that bad. He Really? He's been bothering you that much? You're going to stay sick at home, Alva? Don't you think you should go back? Everybody justifies in this, like, boys will be boys kind of way. Mm-hmm. No way your boss is that bad. And in American Psycho, it's the same thing. He tells his secretary, you know, uh, never wear this uh, suit again. I want you wearing a dress. And I like high heels. And mm-hmm. it's all this, like, boys club nonsense to, to a point where... There's even bizarre identity stuff in that movie where you can't tell what's real or not. And uh, is this all in Patrick Bateman's head? Is any of this actually happening at all? Um, and the the real underpinning of that story is like, this is everyone. Mm-hmm. This is probably every guy in that system is doing like the exact same stuff. He's not special in American yeah. Psycho. He's, yeah. he's what we're all like. Yeah. Um, and in this movie, in Vampire's Kiss with Nicolas Cage, the Alva story to me, like on its face, a client calls and says, hey, I, I want to frame a con- the first contract that I ever signed. Can you find it for me? And so Nicolas Cage assigns it to Alva. You have to find it. But the Spiegelman file, or whatever it is, yeah. it's like gargantuan. It's huge, and it could be anywhere in there. It's going to take you a long time, so please get started. And Alva can't find it. At first, she's like, oh, I thought you didn't want me to. And even I was like, he plainly asked you to, Alva. Yeah. But uh, once she starts trying to find it, she's like working late. Um, She's staying overtime. She can't find it. He's not letting up. And then at a certain point, he calls her into his office, and he's like, the client's on the phone right now. Did you find the file? She says no. And he goes, great. Then you're going to have to watch me as I do a song and dance so that we hopefully don't lose our biggest client. Mm -hmm. And he picks up the phone and we can hear the client speaking who's like, hey, I just want to let you know I did call to ask, like, can you find that file? But just, you know, there's no rush on that. I know you've got a lot to do. I don't need that thing anytime soon. So please, just take your time. I do want it. But, you know, I, 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 I hope I didn't give you the impression that I need it right now when you're all scrambling. So just want to let you know, thanks. And Nicolas Cage hangs up on the, uh, up the phone. And for a second, he goes, well, Alva, I didn't have to sing and dance at all. He was so angry, I couldn't get a word in edgewise. So we, the audience, know. Yeah. He's lying. There's no need for this pressure. Right. But Nicolas Cage is a monster. Mm-hmm. The exact same scene happens in American Psycho. There is a moment where Patrick Bateman takes a phone call uh, and we can hear on his end of the phone that he is trying to make reservations at a place. Um, And uh, they're like, oh, I'm sorry, we can't take a reservation. He's like, really? That's fantastic. They're like, what are you talking about? I just said, I I can't do that. And he's like, all right, 8.30 it is. And hangs up on the phone. He's like doing a show for somebody else and it's all a ruse. It's the same. They're the same movie. Um, Mm -hmm. Nicolas Cage... um, uh, eats a bug and 
uh, kills a does he kill a cat or something? Is he, does he kill? Oh, he, he catches a bird. He yes, catches yes. and eats a live bird. And Patrick Bateman uh, uh, kills a dog and tries to feed a, an ATM machine a stray cat. The, the, it's just the same things happening at the end of the movie. We don't even know what's true or not. Same damn thing. So Alva is to me almost like in a really sad way. If you look at this movie from Alva's perspective, um, every warning sign was there. She knew it, that her boss is unhinged and is capable of killing her. And everyone told her, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a story that we hear a lot when it actually does result in murder. Bummer. It is a bummer, but I I almost think it's kind of fascinating uh, 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 for that it's not even really the centerpiece of the movie but like yeah. it's interesting that this subplot's here at all about a, a woman who is constantly saying i can't return to that office i don't trust this guy and then mm-hmm. once he knows that she doesn't trust him he'll show up and be nice for a minute and then yeah. flip again and have a complete like flip out he's like i, I told her to find that goddamn file that's, after he just tried to be sick. sweet to her that. and it's it is so for a movie as insane as this, I almost found that dynamic to be really upsettingly plausible. Yeah, it definitely is plausible. And I think that the way that you're describing it from Alva's perspective is the way that I thought about it as well, almost in a contrarian way, because I don't think the movie super encourages you to see it from her perspective. No. It kind of feels like it's in service of just seeing him unravel. Yes. Yes. And so that bugs me. I oh, I you completely like, this agree. Is really, it's really just like watch this guy be further and further unhinged, and it happens to be at this woman, and like you know, like watch him chase her like through the building, and it's just it's very in service of his storyline, and for his purposes, his storyline, not the bigger look at the movie. It just seems to be like, look at this guy get more and more unhinged. But it just bugs me that it's at the constant, you know, detriment or to the constant detriment of one person. You're 100% like It would be right. a little bit more palatable, I think, if you were – and man, palatable doesn't necessarily mean good. Maybe whatever. But anyway, um, it wouldn't be as upsetting if it was him doing – progressively more horrible things to different people but it's always to alva right and so it's just like oh god she's like the focus woman yeah. yeah yeah well I, I i completely agree with you again i think that this movie is miserable and Ugh. bad i think this is a bad movie yeah but i and i think you have to but I, I think you have to participate in movies right so like i i think that seeing these events from Alva's perspective is something the movie doesn't necessarily, it does ask you in some ways, like she does yeah, ask for do a gun her from her home. brother, the bullets from her brother. So you do get some of that, but it's not Alva's movie at all. No. Um, but ultimately she is the one who indirectly puts a stop to Nicolas Cage. Mm-hmm. But um, I do think that like you have to, you, you sort of have to lean in and go like, uh, there's a different movie happening in this movie. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. And I maybe that's part of the point. Is it too lofty to think that? I don't think so. I don't think nothing's by mistake, right? I like, know. I, I, because why include those scenes of her at home in bed with her mom and like talking to her brother and stuff? Yeah, exactly. So, I do think it's like an artsy fartsy movie with yeah. maybe those aspirations and everything, but just the it's just so unpleasant to yeah. watch that I cannot care. Yeah, oh, 100%. Because it's all, it's also, it's so hard to, I mean, the, it, I was going to say distracted, but it's the point of the movie is like seeing Nicolas Cage do crazy vampire stuff is like baffling because it also doesn't make any goddamn sense. There's a moment no. where he, he's the least of it. Oh yeah. He's <laughs> staring into the mirror at himself in the morning and then he reaches out and touches it and acts like he just got burned. Mm-hmm. Like mirrors don't burn vampires. I know that's not even part of vampire lore. Like, what is that supposed to be? And then he just turns like nothing happened and walks away. He picks up a right. bug. He picks up a cockroach and eats it for real which on screen, real. which is real. He did two takes of it. They used the first one, and mm-hmm. you would think that the idea would make. I, I can't decide what what's happening in that moment because you'd almost think like, well, he chose to eat the bug, so he's fine with it. 
But even his acting in the scene is like, it's not some brilliant performance where he eats a bug as if it's food. He eats the bug as if he does not want to be eating a bug. You know, like he's forcing himself to eat a bug, which is baffling. I read about this. So apparently in the original script, and I don't completely understand what this means, by the way. Yeah. In the original script, he was supposed to suck a raw egg. Yeah. I don't really get what that means. Suck it means to me it would be a complete egg in its shell. Suck a raw egg? Oh, you mean not even they, not even cracked? They don't say suck down a raw egg. It repeatedly said suck a raw <laughs> egg. Teach your grandmother so to suck eggs. I, I know. So that's what I'm confused by is I don't really uh, understand what that means. I can only imagine they mean to suck it down and swallow it or whatever. But anyway, so that was the original thing. And then this was one of the few edits that he had because people kind of assume because he's known for ad-libbing a lot that a lot of this was improvised. But like you said before, the director was totally on board with all this. So actually, it's not a really improvised movie. It's pretty close to script. And he suggested, though, for this, that instead he eat a live cockroach because he, Nicolas Cage, was afraid of cockroaches and he was very method uh he was a very method actor sounds horrible and so he totally so he wanted to use that now the thing is exactly it's strange you would think that him like why do you want to bring the horribleness to the screen yeah because isn't the whole thing that this guy is doing things that are out of the ordinary and he would love eating this cockroach right a but vampire no, theory like like uh, uh so this is a play on and I, I think what he's right about like this is a play on renfield from right. the original Dracula story. Oh, I actually didn't even think about that. Yeah. It is. I I, I think intentionally. No, he I calls think... out, I've always said Dwight Fry, who plays Renfield in the original Dracula movie. If you go back and look at that performance from 1931, Dwight Fry is doing Nick Cage stuff. <laughs> it, it, it's it's insane, but it's fantastic. It is, mm -hmm. it's creepy and it's scary. And he's got the big eyes and it's the theatrical acting uh, it, it's it's but it's it's fantastic. It's done dryly and with no comedy, um, mm -hmm. and it's 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 a, a a man who's insane who you don't want to be near. Anyway, he is in the throes of being controlled by Dracula, and thinks that he needs to eat vermin. Like he's not allowed to bite people, so he has to eat bugs and rats and stuff. So Renfield eats bugs. Nick Cage in this movie doesn't think that he's a vampire for like half the fu the film. Mm -hmm. But very early on, he's bitten by the vampire and starts acting insane. I think he thinks he's a Renfield more than he's a vampire. vampire. Because okay. later in the movie, he starts going, it finally happened. Once he does the mirror thing, once he, see, he, once he thinks he can't see himself in the mirror, is when he goes, it happened. It finally happened. Where am I? I'm a vampire. That's what makes him think he's a vampire. Before that, I think he thinks yeah. I'm I'm a, a vampire I'm, underling. Yeah, a vampire underling. So that's why he eats the bug. And right. I almost think maybe that in character sense. he doesn't want to have to eat bugs, but he thinks he's supposed to. Well, okay, that makes sense. That could be right. It's crazy. So in the commentary, I've always talked about Dwight Fry in terms of Nicolas Cage and this movie. Nicolas Cage, in the commentary, calls out Dwight Fry. Mm -hmm. So that was another moment oh, where I was like, cool. uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh Do I understand this? And is this a bad thing? Is it like a red yeah, flag right. that I, I might <laughs> be understanding this? Even? How does this reflect on you? Exactly. It's I, Maybe I shouldn't be revealing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> maybe it's dangerous for me to admit. But I think I'm starting to understand it. But so like that's that's crazy, but it's fascinating. Um, mm -hmm. Now I wanna I wanna I wrote down a bunch of quotes from the movie, and well, real quick bef before you do quotes, I think I would like to say something else that Nicholas Cage requested on set. Okay, are you aware of this? So he he did not like Jennifer Beals. He wanted his then girlfriend Patricia Arquette to play the vampire in the movie who's biting him and stuff. Right. And so he had some sort of problem with, with Jennifer Beals and made a big show of it and stuff. And he said he was having a hard time getting turned on for their love scenes. So he requested that hot yogurt be poured onto his toes during the love scenes what? so that he could be in the mood. What? What? What does that mean? 
it means exactly that. But I've just never heard of such a thing. I've never, never in in all my years. <laughs> I know it. So I felt it. It bore mentioning that Nicolas Cage required hot yogurt to be poured on his toes in order to I, I don't want to say get aroused, but get into get into enough of a mood, an amorous mood. To be able to convincingly writhe with Jennifer Beals of Flashdance. Have you tried acting, my dear boy? <laughs> my dear boy. <laughs> Do you have to? For, two points. Maybe. Do you have to be genuinely aroused to do your movie work? I know. Especially because everybody says, and, you know, I know it's different for everybody, but uh, everybody talks about how mechanical it is. Yeah. And how choreographed. So just, like, do it. Just do it. It's your job. That right. that's a little bit mad. of like listen I I love the entertainment industry and I I consider myself to be adjacent and I have aspirations. It's work. You're at work right now. Mm-hmm. Do I have to drizzle hot yogurt on your toes, Mr. Cage? Are you sure? Is this necessary know, maybe, for you to do your maybe job? That was a, maybe that was a way to insult her. I don't know, but that is What? <laughs> Even that's you know, be baffling. Like, oh. I know, but be like, I, I don't even know. I well, know. then, j- if you want to be insulting, just be like, "This is going to be a lot. Of, this is going to be really hard for me to do." This is going to be so gross. Yeah, exactly. I, I, uh, uh. And I also, know. just just be professional. You don't have to be a weirdo who's insulting people. I know. Uh, so yeah. anyway, he, he he has talked about how he thinks that he was probably very unpleasant to be around when making this movie, and like in the commentary, he's like. At one point, so it, there's a point in the movie where Alva finally finds the file, um, but he uh, uh, thinks that he's a vampire now and his his life is over. So when she brings him the file, he goes, it's too late, Alva. It's just too late. And he goes, too late, too late. And he's doing this like ding dong thing with his head, like yeah. from one, you know, he's like going... He's yeah. like tick-tocking with his head. Yeah, he calls like on the commentary side. track doing like a cuckoo clock thing. And he goes, now I have no idea where this came from. I don't know. I don't even know what this is supposed to be. <laughs> like he, he knows he knows this is crazy. And he's like, yeah, I was I was out of my mind when we were making this movie. And even with uh-huh. the pigeon scene, he's like, yeah, yeah, I caught this pigeon. And it's hard, it's hard to catch a pigeon. And the director goes, well, we drugged all the pigeons. <laughs> and he goes, oh, you did? He goes, yeah, you didn't know that? Yeah, we had it. Well, you just thought you could catch, you can't catch a pigeon. He goes, I don't know what I... don't I... know, can't you? They don't move very fast. And not when you drug them for a movie. But so Nicholas Cage is like, I don't know. I don't know what I thought. I was I was out of my mind. Huh. <laughs> but the director really goes like, did you think that you just were able to chase and catch a pigeon? I don't think that's so far out of the realm of possibility. All right. Well, you, you and see... I on Patreon, we're going to do some... We're gonna, You and I are each going to chase some pigeons and see if we can catch them. I mean, do you usually see pigeons really booking it? Like, it doesn't seem that hard. They can fly. Yeah, I know, but if you sneak up on one, I don't know. I want to see you sneak up on a pigeon. I'm not Look, I'm not saying I can do this I want to see I'm you. just saying it's not like pigeons are famously so fast and evasive. I want to see like... you tiptoe up behind a pigeon and try to catch it now. <laughs> no way. And then they I want you come... I want you to catch it and it to start carrying you away. <laughs> I want you to they catch it by its feet. It's at my face. <laughs> it's flapping and you're going, like, I got it. I got whoa, whoa, whoa. William. William. Help me! <laughs> help me! Help me! Help Just let me. go! I no, can't. it's it's taking me! It took me! It t- <laughs> Past tense. Too it hard. took me! It took me! <laughs> On the news, Ab- above yeah. <laughs> above Manhattan, <laughs> it took me. Says podcaster. Somehow oh, carried away by one pigeon, <laughs> by a single pigeon. <laughs> Now that's a T-shirt. You holding on to a pigeon that's flying away above <laughs> the New York City skyline, and it that's just right. says, "It it's taking me, or it took me." It took me over the Chrysler Building. Yeah, somebody, <laughs> somebody make that, somebody make that come to life. Um, All right, so hit me with some quotes. Yeah, so uh, uh, here's here's a big a big moment that I just want to call up. This movie's full of quotes. Yeah, full of quotes. So like Definitely you know, notable quotable. There's like a moment where you know Nicholas Cage is trying to get Alva to look through the files, and at a certain point he's like, "So just look through the files." And he goes, "Am I getting through to you, Alva?" <laughs> it's like say, I liked that part. Big, big, crazy, <laughs> and then and then of course a very famous one um, where he's talking to a psychiatrist and he's like, oh, yeah. "How can it not be in the right file? You just put it in the file." 
according to alphabetical order. You know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, huh? And then it goes, that's all you have to do. I never misfiled anything. Not once. Not one time. And he puts his hands on his hips like yeah. Mick Jagger. Just <laughs> it, And it also, like, he's accusing Alva of having misfiled. And then he says, I never misfiled anything. Not once. Not yeah, one time. Yeah, is better, better than Alva. You would, she misfiled. I've never done that. That would almost lead you to believe that he did misplace that file initially. Uh-huh. Which would be almost poetic, except he calls out at the beginning of the movie that this file predates either of them so i don't know right uh, right on the commentary he's like there's a bit of mcjagger in here but i i don't really know why and then the director is like the hand motions you're doing here and nicholas cage goes oh believe it or not those are actually intensely choreographed oh yeah my in my look i believe it back home me and with my cat i wouldn't you know block out all of this i'm like oh god it's yeah. intensely and anybody watch that scene tell me if it feels like it's intensely choreographed i bet it is though it might be I'm, that yeah. guy is very intense about his craft i don't disagree i don't disagree I now be surprised all of that is to almost get those bigger things out of the way because here's my actual favorite quote of this movie okay. nicholas cage is in the bathroom in el baño mm-hmm. occupado yeah and he is looking in the mirror, and he thinks his reflection's not there. It's that moment. And he starts screaming, where am I? Oh, God, where am I? And he's crying. He's going, where am I? And then I put the subtitles on to catch this full thing. Here's what happens. Somebody in the stall speaks up and says the following. You're in the goddamn crapper, low, and I'm trying to take a dump. So either shut up and leave the goddamn acting lessons for home or go back to the ladies' room. <laughs> yeah. And the shot is just on a pair of shoes with pants bunched around them and the belts yep. <laughs> lying limply on the ground. You're in the goddamn crapper low. That's his character. That's Nicolas Cage low. Right. And I'm trying to take a dump. So, so either shut up and leave the goddamn acting lessons at home or go back to the ladies' room. To be so cavalier about so. taking a dump and like yelling at a coworker or something. Uh, insane you're in the goddamn crapper yeah. and i'm trying to take a dump right the freedom <laughs> the f- that guy must move through his daily life with the bravado the chutzpah it's of almost this. it's almost enviable <laughs> yes i find it admirable to be that free i can't imagine admirable <laughs> admirable there was also did you see that there was like an older lady so he does at one yeah. point chase alva into the women's bathroom and there's this older lady who's walking t- toward the camera. And she says, like, what the F is going on? And is, like, looking right in the camera. Yes. Like, walking toward it. So the bathroom is where the truth comes out. I liked out. her. I liked her, too, yes. except Isn't she, it always? she walked out of this moment where a man had burst into the bathroom and was clearly oh, I know. threatening I know. I Alva like, physically. No, no, no. You stick around. You don't say, what's going on? And get out of it. Now, there. arguably, she could have also not felt safe. It's not really what I got from her. But, no, she seemed put out, I would say. Uh, yeah. She, let's hope she was, if she didn't feel safe, let's hope she was going out there to get a third party that we just didn't see. She left Alva with the monster. Although she right. does visit Alva at her desk later and go like, you okay, honey? So mm-hmm. it, it almost spoke to the sadness of like, that's what it's like being a lady in this office. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, the, the bathroom seems to be mm-hmm. where the real stuff happens. She looks in the Where's camera. This is done. She looks in the camera like, this is out of control and then this right. dude taking a dump he says leave the goddamn acting lessons for home so mm-hmm. that almost plays to me intentionally right. or not like a meta textual we're yes. acknowledging that nicholas cage's character is mm-hmm. too big right he yeah he's not knows. even acting the part of a vampire no he, he's, he's just completely over the top the man on the can right thinks this is bad acting too mm-hmm. right he gets it yeah he totally. gets it he's having yeah. our experience yes well our experience plus <laughs> that's true coming soon experience plus <laughs> to every bowl he's, he's going through something you want to sign up for experience plus <laughs> unfortunately i think i've been having experience uh, plus. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this 
stomach bug. <laughs> uh, but I just love this line here. And the goddamn crapper low, and I'm trying to I take don't. a dump. <laughs> so we either shut up and leave the goddamn acting lessons for home or go back to the ladies' room. And he's also acknowledging you burst into the ladies' room and threatened a girl. Did he say go back to the ladies' yeah, room? Yeah, he says, or go back to the ladies' room. I thought he was just saying that as a, like, you know, misogynistic, like... Oh, you're being... You're being yeah, you're being like a wuss. Kind because of you're being a crybaby, you're therefore being feminine. Yes. Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe. Or I, I just took it as, like, we all agree. Or no, because there's a scene, again, something that happens in American Psycho. It's, like, in a conference room, and all the men are sitting around. They're like, hello, you are one piece of work. You even jumped up on the desk, huh? That chased her? Oh, you're mm-hmm. a crazy man. You should be careful, though. Alva carries a gun. So they mm-hmm. yeah. they all know that he did this. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're f- fine with it. Yeah. They're fine with it. Yeah. Uh, it's, they suck. They're they terrible. They suck. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, uh, two other things. So um, he, Nicolas Cage in a club, uh, approaches a woman like Nosferatu, literally yes. like Camp Orlock. Camp Orlock. Right. Well, Camp Orlock. Welcome Ooh, to, I want Camp to, to Camp Orlock. Orlock. Everybody <laughs> creeps around like a big weirdo <laughs> from a silent film. He's walking like Nosferatu from the original Nosferatu. It's called Count Orlock. So he's got yes. his arms outstretched and his eyes wide again, and he's walking slowly. He's again, he's doing things he thinks he has to do yeah, as a vampire. Vampire-y. He was watching Nosferatu at one point in the movie. So he's almost he's in the film, the character that he's playing is playing Max Shrek from right. Nosferatu. He's doing what he thinks he's supposed to do as a vampire. And again, mm-hmm. This time, I almost thought it made sense and worked for me. And it was scary. All right. And I also had the thought, if you went out to dinner and you saw a coworker <laughs> who showed up by themselves and was walking around like that and doing that <laughs> just on their own, <laughs> how scared would you be? <laughs> That's extremely uh, scary, and I'd be extremely concerned. How scary is that? Very scary. If you just saw, but if, again, in a mental health crisis way. Oh yeah, but also, but like also in like a larping kind of way, where you you'd go like, "Low, is that you?" And he's like, "Oh, hey, uh, hey. <laughs> yeah, no, I just it's not me. I'm Nosferatu. I'm just out. You know, it's Friday night. I thought I'd come out. Yeah, <laughs> like if you drove through town and you and you." caught me pretend to be like a kitty cat on the street and i was like oh my I, god I, I just like to do that i don't know it's, uh, you if you snap you weren't supposed to see to, me to, to william yeah and you're talking like this and you're like yeah i just like to do that then that is just your fun thing and i just let you do that really you let me act like a kitty cat on the street like buster for jones from cats if you seem totally fine otherwise, <laughs> you drive like, through I town. just like to do this you drive through and town like, and you see me getting coffee and i'm dressed like buster for jones from cats, yeah, and I'm acting like a kitty cat. <laughs> You're fine with that as long as I'm during like, the it's during my hobby. the daytime. Yeah, <laughs> you said at night. That's different. Because... Well, I do it. I do it from day to night. Because the... oh oh okay, this is your this from is your full tonight. state now. Yeah, this is what I yeah. No, then I'm concerned. All right. But no, if you're being if you're being totally yourself usually, but in relative privacy, the cover of Dark of Night. You enjoy being busted for Jones, but then you are still interacting with your daily life the way you usually do. Then do I privately think it's very, very odd? Yes. I'm like, I, I have to delay guide to the unknown again. I have to, I got to go out. I got to, there's something I got to do. I have to get my, my velvet vest <laughs> mended. <laughs> and my, my top hat. By the way, refitted. free, free, uh, uh, t-shirt idea that I still have not seen anybody do. Bill Murray in just like you know he's in the broadway musical cats but all the fur is per- patterned, patterned as garfield and he looks oh, sad okay. can't you can't you yeah. see that on like a loot crate shirt or something yeah. like that and a million people wear it and it becomes like a meme or something like yeah. that yeah mm-hmm. uh, well maybe not today really i i feel like i don't know all the bill murray stuff still seems like people love it so i don't know somebody make that and then give me a, a cut i don't think that it's my bill idea murray but i don't want to make it is i don't think it's burning as hot as it had been Eh, maybe maybe when the new there. Ghostbusters comes out, it will again. Yeah, I mean, it's still running a temp, but I, I don't think that it's like a huge deal. All right, fair enough. Not so sure. um, he is in the club, and he and he approaches a woman like Nosferatu, Nicolas Cage, and he immediately bites her on the neck 
and Mm -hmm. kills her. Like, for real, yeah. For real. This is not a debatable thing. There is later on a uh, a headline on a newspaper um, that reads, Disco Death Girl Victim of Bizarre Murder. With a full-on picture of... Of neck wound. the corpse. Yeah. And he is now covered in blood. He's got blood dripping down his face. And he is at his absolute lowest, almost exclusively living in a fantasy. He starts talking mm-hmm. to a wall, thinking he's speaking to a psychiatrist. And she is like, well, of course you had to do those things. You, Oh, please, you killed one person? Don't feel bad about that. Like his psyche is right. concocting a scenario in which his psychiatrist coddles him again. Almost being like, oh, don't don't feel bad for murdering people mm-hmm. and, and, and stuff. And he starts to um, hallucinate that she's hooked him up with um, somebody to be in a relationship with. Yeah. And so for like five seconds, it's going well. And then he starts turning on his imaginary girlfriend. But like as he's talking to her, um, she's like, so what's all this I heard about you killing somebody? He goes, oh, that. I turned into a vampire. It's a long story. <laughs> like he... And then, uh huh. And then later on, when he's fighting with his imaginary girlfriend, he starts mocking what she pre- assuming. I assume he heard her say in his head, "Why'd you have to become a vampire? Why couldn't you be more normal?" Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, uh, I don't know this stage of Nicolas Cage where he's walking around the streets, he's like wailing, covered yeah. in blood, and dragging a big wooden stake around. He asks some people to kill him. Yeah, his hair is no longer slicked back. Yeah, he's... He looks a mess. And and in the commentary, they're like, this is sometimes people in New York... Yeah. ...just act like this. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're just like untreated, mentally ill people on the streets. Mm-hmm. And he so authentically embodies that, that yeah. it, again, made me feel like sick. Oh, it, God, it, It's yeah. like hard to watch. Yes. But also, it's shot in this bizarro way where it's shot like an episode of Jackass... Or like a hidden, it looks like the Jamie Kennedy prank show, mm-hmm. where it's like shot from down the block with a telephoto I know, lens, it is weird. and he's approaching people, and going like, "Kill me, kill me," and hopping around with a stake. Well, some of them were just legit randos walking down the street. They yeah. weren't all like extras. The director so at one I... point goes like, "These are real hobos," and I looked at it, and I was like, "These aren't hobos." They may be real people, but I don't. I don't know hobos. Hobos. What the hell? I mean, maybe they were. Maybe it was partially out of necessity to shoot it that way, so that it wouldn't give away that this is a movie set or whatever. You know. <sighs> yeah, I guess. But because that, they that were makes trying it to like, get real people. It almost becomes like a YouTube prank video at that point. And also, mm-hmm. he's got an obsession with wanting to be stopped. He do, not only does he not want to be a vampire, he wants to be dead. At one point, yeah. when he's screaming at Alva and she leaves the office, he goes, "Don't you want to shoot me, Alva?" And it's like, yeah, he does not want to be alive anymore. Mm -hmm. So he scrambles into his apartment and he's hiding under his couch, which he's demolished his apartment and he turns the couch upside down to use it like a coffin. Like he can raise and lower the coffin lid. It's this couch that he's turned upside down. Wikipedia has something very interesting to say. So Alva uh, was assaulted by Nicolas Cage, perhaps Mm -hmm. sexually assaulted. It's sort of unclear. I know. It, I didn't get that from the movie, but then I read that afterward. Yeah. So it's it's both. It's like she. Mm-hmm. It, I, I've I've heard, or at least I've heard it both ways. Um, in some places, I read that she thinks that he sexually assaulted her because she passes out, but he didn't. He mm-hmm. like started to attack her and then sh- shifted and and moved on and and ran away. Um, or s- like. I mean, at the very least, he did like rip open. He did, 100%, yes. So there is, you know, assault, but... Yes. yes. But so she she tells everything to her brother, who then decides that he's going to maybe kill Nicolas Cage. So he shows up at Nicolas Cage's apartment when Nicolas Cage is hiding in his makeshift coffin. And Wikipedia says, quote, Emilio hears flatulent noises and finds him and upturns the sofa. I don't remember flatulent noises. Do you? So Wikipedia is saying that Emilio walked in and heard Nicolas Cage farting. Farting in his coffin? (laughs) Farting in his fake coffin so loud that it gave up his location. What? William, do you remember that? Not only do I uh, not remember that, I I re-listened to that moment, cranked, pressing my headphones into the sides of my head, hoping to hear a fart. (laughs) Who? 
wrote this? I don't know. Wikipedia has issues. <laughs> issues. That's so weird. I wonder if somebody was like farting in the room when that person wrote it. And then they were like, oh, it must be the mover. <laughs> oh, you think so? <laughs> and they talk like Nicolas Cage does in this movie? <laughs> Oh, must be the movie. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sure that was movie. the movie, and I it was somebody else. You're saying somebody farting under there. You said yeah. somebody farted in the room while someone else was watching the movie. So they're sitting right. in a room watching vampires kiss. Right. Their With friend farts, and then they go, "Oh, that must have been the movie," <laughs> which implies that they know there's a chance that it wasn't. Okay, or oh. they, they <laughs> fart in the room and they're like, I can't believe he's farting under there. <laughs> or something. <laughs> Did you hear that, Gregory? I can't believe he's farting under there. Why, That's look, right. it's, dra- it's, it's revealed his location to Emilio. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only explanation. The poor fool. <laughs> the absolute fool. Who knew that blood would give him gas? Oh, my God. That smell, Um, it never just goes away. (laughs) (laughs) So, anyway, there's a scramble, and Emilio ends up taking the wood and staking Nicolas Cage through the stomach. He stakes the vampire with wood, and Nicolas Cage dies. Perishes. Uh, Honestly, the first thing that I thought of First, you know, again, I'm going to say like with a big asterisk. Mm-hmm. I like that Nicolas Cage dies the way a vampire dies at the end of this movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Stake through the heart, a wooden stake through the heart. Mm-hmm. But also, I want to see what happens next. I want to see the police go, hold on. Hold <laughs> Look at on. This place. Downtown, there was a woman murdered in a nightclub. When somebody bit her neck like a vampire. Mm. And then we found a body in an apartment that was staked through the heart. Yeah. What Yeah. happened? Like, yeah. after this that moment, in this imaginary universe, if it continued, people would be like, vampires God, are real. I don't want it to. He lived yeah, as a right. vampire. He did what a vampire yeah, right. does, right? Eh, that, I mean, they'd probably find his fake teeth. That's true. <laughs> that's true. But no, at least somebody who thinks they're a vampire is real. Well, yeah, and that's almost like that old Rosemary's Baby thing of like it's almost more dangerous for him to think he's a vampire, right? Yeah, like, because then mean, he's going to do instance, what? Yeah, it certainly is. He yeah. did what vampires do. He bit a woman and killed her. Right. It's insane. It's 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 crazy. <sighs> it's a hell of a movie. So, Will, what movie do you like better, Vampires Kiss or American Psycho? Having watched them back to back. Oh my god. Uh, uh, I, I, I'll I say this. I don't think I, I walked away from either one of them going, ooh, I liked that. <laughs> yeah. But, ooh. Ooh. Ooh, I like this. Ooh, I liked that. I closed my laptop. <laughs> I <laughs> liked that. There's no one in the room. I'm satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, but I think, I think I was the most sort of impressed on this viewing of vampire's kiss. Okay. Cuz I think okay. I think I already knew I knew the landmines going in. Right. I knew the A B C D reciting the alphabet thing. I knew the performance. Mm-hmm. And I've I know a little bit more about Nick Cage this time going in to watch it maybe as well. I was yeah. also watching it and taking notes, which I've never done. I've never watched mm-hmm. Vampire's Kiss and sat taking furious copious notes. <laughs> So I doing it this time, I actually was like, oh, I see what they're doing. I understand why they made some of these choices Mm -hmm. as bad as they are. I'm going to say I like Vampire's Kiss more than American Psycho. All right. That is surprising. It it hurts to say. I I don't want to, you know, just like people are like, I can't pick my favorite child. I can't yeah, right. pick I can't really pick which one of these movies I like less. Yeah, your least favorite. Yeah. But I I walked away chewing on more from Vampire's Kiss. Yeah. Um than I did with from American Psycho. Including Flash. Including Flash. Flash. Well, um, there you have it. 
Can I just say one last thing? Yes. In Vampire's Kiss, Nicolas Cage, at one point in the movie, before he's supposed to be out of his mind, mm-hmm. he's laughing and he goes, ha 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 ha, ha 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 ha. Yes. And then when he's crying, he goes, boo hoo, boo hoo. He says boo hoo. Yes. And ha 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 ha. Um, and I was watching it being like, well, this is crazy. I don't know he why he did this he one. He challenged himself to do that. That's right. Yep, that's what I was going to mm-hmm. say. He he, oh, okay. he just wanted to see if he could right. find a way to emotionally justify literally saying boo-hoo. Mm-hmm. And I would argue, no, he could not. No. But also, that's all he did. <laughs> so they had to put it in the movie. <laughs> right, there was no other choice. This and, movie and is also, a game for him, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's not you a know, movie. Also the, no, this is an, all an experiment. It's an experiment and a series of personal challenges. I think especially Nicolas Cage of the past really got his jollies in that way. Yes. Like, or to say it in a nicer way, was like very artistically fulfilled yeah. by challenging himself this way. I read somewhere else that he was like, this movie was in me somewhere at that time. Mm-hmm. He was like, I had to make this movie so I could move on. I had to get this out Boy. of my system. That's tough and stuff. And that I also... I also kind of respect where I'm like, yeah. all right. Like, I don't know. He got like 40,000 bucks. He bought a, a crazy sports car. Well, off of yeah. this movie. And he's like, or 400,000 bucks. And, uh, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like if you get to work as an actor and you're paid that heavily, that like your fee just goes to buying a car, this mm-hmm. can all be a game to you to a certain totally. extent. Totally. And I yeah. also, yeah. I also, I don't think I respect that from the craft of filmmaking, but I do think I kind of get it from the fun of performing. Yeah, it, if you can, if you have the opportunity to do something that you're, like, really interested in doing, like, and you're going to get paid, for, like, why the hell not? Yeah, and it's... The director's it's, on board with this right. cuckoo stuff, so is the writer. Like, why would he not? And it's That's fun to go big. Awesome. It's fun to go crazy and, and right. broad i did right. some voice acting recently for um there's a new show called out called um shoe bones shoe bones, shoe bones um created by uh morgan ormond who did uh, uh earthbreak with me and uh uh morgan ormond uh, uh they asked me if i would play a character and it's not out yet you can hear a little bit of me in the trailer but uh it was a, a very fun character doing a, a very broad character to do and uh, I remember for the recording sessions, I really just like opened up and belted it. I like I played it really big for a few things, and it was super fun. And I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how well it will gel with everything. Morgan seemed happy, so that's really all I can go by. But say if Morgan liked it, then you're good. Then I'm good. But like, it's fun to go crazy. Mm-hmm. It's kind of fun. So I get it on that level. Right. But I don't. Uh, I don't know if this is a movie. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's out there. It's out it there. Exists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, a thing. I, I looked up a couple of uh, uh, reviews, and one of them was just, uh, "This sucks. This movie <laughs> sucks." And I, I, I love it Basically anytime somebody says that. Yeah, this headline for this review: one out of five stars. This movie sucks, <laughs> but, but, but not say. in a good way. Like I just love the brutality. <laughs> I know. Sometimes the simplest burns like that like hurt the most. Where yeah. it's like, oh man. The movie completely you think I sucks. Suck. Yeah, yeah. You think I suck? Oh no. God. Um now we're gonna get a one star review that says you suck. I know. <laughs> oh great. Uh well there you have it, everybody. Week two of Cage Tober. That's right, Cage Tober marches on. It does. We're halfway <laughs> through, technically. Yes. And I I think I think not remembering fully what's on the slate going uh-huh. forward but i think we're through the potentially the worst of it i think so too yes wicker man and vampire's kiss yes are probably the basement they're, yeah i think so too they're well-known bad movies yeah. they're you know <laughs> recognized as bad yes they're famous for yes. being bad the, the rest of what two. we have to do something is a little bit overlooked and forgotten and something else is rather new uh-huh. And uh, I've seen almost like celebrated in a cult kind of way. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely having a resurgence at the moment, yes. I would say. So we're like doing one of his resurgent movies. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so I think I think it'll be interesting. And if you are one of our um, patrons over on patreon.com slash GTTU pod, you already know what these movies are. That's right. And if you would like to know what they are, then go ahead and head over there and join us on Patreon at the $4 or more tier. And then you get access to all kinds of bonus stuff, including a bonus episode a month, a Discord, all kinds of things. And you support the show, which means a ton to us. It really helps does. Helps us out, keeps us doing it. Yeah, it helps us in a big yeah. way. We were talking yes. even today about things that we want to do. You know, the show might have sounded or looked differently in the last couple of weeks because my basement mm-hmm. set got got ruined and we're still not ready to move back down there and rebuild. But Chris and I do have really fun ideas of how to improve the look and the sound of the show. And all of that is going to be able to happen because of, of Patreon. For sure. Um, mm-hmm. But we can absolutely use your support. So patreon.com slash pod and very fun things happening in the next couple of weeks. Some big changes, yes. to be quite frank. Big changes. And I also want to say, purely for my own ego, I found out that today, as we're recording today, which is what? Is the 6th. October 6th. Today is the 10-year anniversary of me getting into podcasting. Oh, I recorded cool. my first ever podcast 10 years ago today. And I've only missed a handful of weeks uh-huh. in those 10 years. Um, oh, well. So maybe some people are with me from way back then and with us now. I, I, I don't know. But um, I, I've, I've loved it. Um, here's to 10 more. And uh, yeah. thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all for listening. Uh, Very cool. Please do feel free. Go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a good review. If that's your kind of thing, share the show on social media. Um, we would greatly appreciate it if you would help us get the, the good name of Guide to the Unknown out there. Um, yeah. For all things Guide to the Unknown, head to gttupod.com. That'll bring you to our merch. That can bring you to our Patreon. That can bring you to every previous show we've ever done. And they're 200 plus at mm-hmm. this point. And you can also find us online. That's right. I am at Chillin' Kristen. And I am at The Myth Traveler. So we will be back next week as we continue Cagetober, uh, hopefully uh, getting into something that's more of a movie. There are definitely more of movies, I believe. I think so. But until that time comes, we must travel. Back to the netherworld, go we. Uh, One thing I wanted to challenge you to do was to say the alphabet fun, like Nick Cage. Oh, I can't do that. I don't know. You can't do it nearly as well as him. No. So why no even way. try? I don't even remember how he does it. It's just all cr- like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Like, just like that the whole time, right? Yeah, that's pretty much right. He was I also like, I wanted to too. challenge myself to even say the alphabet entertaining. I'm like, eh. oh, I know. yeah. All it does is it just gets bigger. It's not like I. <laughs> he definitely is like going back and forth like A, B, C with his body. E, like, F, G. Yeah. yeah. And then he starts clapping and. Oh, yeah. Wiggling that's right. his hands. What a movie. What a friggin' movie. Oh, yeah. Man, I hated that movie. I'm so glad that that's in the rear view. I know. That's in our past now. Yeah, it's, in my, it's a part of my past. I don't think I had to watch American Psycho for that. I know. I, yeah. It's I don't know why I'm doing it to myself, but I am. I'm going ham. I'm going ham that's, in Cagetober. That's all right. Now you have your fun. Is it fun if I hate it? I don't it? know. All right. <laughs> you tell me you keep doing it. Uh, it's so just, it must it's, be fun on some level. It's just my nature. I also almost watched American Psycho 2 with Mila Kunis Why? and William Shatner. Why would you do that? Morbid, For this? Morbid curiosity. I mean, curiosity. you just wanted to do that out of your curiosity, yeah. but it doesn't relate to yeah. Vampire's Mo- Kiss. Okay. Mostly out of my own curiosity. Yeah, no, I've never seen that. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, uh, this is the end of the live uh, recording. Nothing went catastrophically wrong this time. No. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. You. Yeah. See you in the next one. Cha-cha-cha. All right, we're off the stream.